So this is a video that's going to be about premium rendering. So in all likelihood you're going to really benefit from having a fairly fast computer to do this. I'm going to bring in a model and uh, this is one of the models that Horro sorted out from the uh, scanning repository. So this is the Stanford scans and I'm going to use a fairly high resolution version. So this is 26.7 megabytes and uh, it says here that he converted it in MeshLab. So this is my model. A little render with that. It's just regular rendering mode. Right. I'm going to uh, going to narrow my field of view to get to get a look at this model. And then I'm going to rotate it slightly. Just sort of generally set things up. I think what I'm going to do is change the document setup to one to one aspect ratio so it suits the model itself and then try and get it to be framed nicely because I'm using a premium effects then obviously render time is going to be critical so I don't need to render any more screen than necessary when doing this so I've just landed him there on the ground and material wise I'm going to choose a material that I just made the other day uh, that uh, featured in, in a, an image I uploaded and uh, which is the primary reason why I wanted to uh, do this tutorial to show you how the, the light was set up so this is as things stand with the regular rendering right so what I'm going to do and modify the sky and set the atmosphere off and set the sky to fully black and then go into the Skylab and the image based lighting tab I'm going to use image open and use the Trepan Hall 2 1280 HDR backdrop it's only going to be used for providing reflection so uh, I don't need a very high resolution it won't be visible in the scene as you can see as it loads, it loads rather dark and lower the quality I'm going to set the specular output and the HDR effect to zero because I'm not going to use those I'm just using the backdrop and I'm going to set it up so it looks you know nice and bright somewhere like that and uh, I'm going to add it to the sky so I suppose I could set this exactly to 50 right and if I set render in scene you see it's not providing any light and the sunlight has been disabled so that's okay right before I leave this lab, I'm going to export this image now, this brightened image that I've created. I'm going to export it as a BMP format, but I'm going to export it in spherical. So this is just a spherical map of background. I'm going to use that in a bit so just see that it's exported there. And I'll be able to pick that up in a minute. So now we render our scene and we can see that on the model these these highlights here are all that are being provided by the uh, the backdrop but that's okay because that's all I want it to provide it's, it's the details that make the difference in this uh, rendering the other thing is the background as you can see with being low resolution I'm gonna have to uh, put something there so we can't see it. so if I go into the create menu I'm gonna create a cube modify the material of this cube reduce the diffusion to zero and then just slide it backwards in the scene and enlarge it until it covers the field of view so these dotted lines coming from the perspective camera that I'm looking at in the overhead view there's my uh, model there uh, represent what the camera can see more or less so if I make sure the edges of the cube are larger than that then it'll comfortably cover the field of view and I can still get the reflections from the backdrop so I'll just use the camera dot here to save the present camera position and then we'll consider changing the render mode so in the render options here I'm going to use premium effects I'm going to set the raise per pixel down to 4 for now so it uh, works fairly efficiently I'm going to set true ambience TA scatter correction boost light and turn the ray depth down to 4 for rendering efficiency so that uh, sets the amount of light gathering that goes on so it's going to send out probes four times into the environment right now I hit render and we see what we get now what's happening here is that the light gathering process on boost light is getting a lot of high dynamic range information from the backdrop and it's giving us all this noise and this noise is very difficult to combat in boost light so what we need to do is find a way of isolating the trambient rendering from the backdrop to do that I'm going to create a, a radial light and edit it and set it to true ambience optimization use gel go into procedural here set the mode to normal 
turn the diffuse off, turn the transparency off, so it's just a black sphere. And then if I check out of that, and then check out of that, I'm going to enlarge that so it's huge. So I've just scaled it so it's huge, and I call this my TA fire wall. And that's going to get rid of the fireflies for us, and I'm also going to lock it so I don't accidentally get hold of it again. So now if I render now, you can see we have lost all our true ambience lighting, but we still need the true ambience lighting to provide the general light on this model. So I'm going to do is create another radial light, slightly different this time, edit it. I'm going to use true ambience optimization, use gel, here's an important step, include only the background. And this will ensure that it doesn't interfere in any other of its, of its properties except through the ambient channel. So in procedural now, set it to normal mode, set the diffuse off, set the ambient up, and then put a blob in the ambient channel, switch it to picture, go into the uh, texture source editor, click on an empty slot, and here we go. We've got our spherical map of the background, check out. It's uh, automatically set to the sinusoidal, but what we need is spherical for it to work properly. I also need it to be fully transparent, which means if we need to, we can stack these radial lights, as long as they've got slightly different diameters, then they can see through and provide more light through the ambient channel. So I'll check out of that, check out again, and go into the sky fog, and here I can set the global ambience up that's going to drive this effect, and then I can enlarge this radial light and put it around our model. So now we should be getting some light on this model that's being provided from this a radial light that's being used as a, as, a, as a TA light source. Now if I lower this down a bit because I seem to remember that the spherical app had quite a lot of light on the ground then uh, there won't be so much up light on the model. It's a, sometimes difficult to estimate how things are going to turn out just by looking at these uh, low resolution well, low uh, rays per pixel renders, but you do eventually get used to it. So, you can see on the ground here that the intersection of the sphere, that is this light source, is uh, showing up on the ground plane. So I'm going to alter the ground plane material now. I'll edit that, and I'll make it fully reflective. Turn off the diffuse. Set the anisotropy to fully black, and turn the effect up. And then I'm going to use the diffuse channel as a black channel there through metallicy to make sure it, it at low angles it's absorbing light so the ground is going to reflect but it's also going to remove light from the scene so this will in, in, in an effect shade the underside of the model as well but by setting the anisotropy I can use render options and switch blurred reflections on there and that should have the effect of creating a slightly blurred almost like it's on water effect on the ground so I'll check out of that now. I can see that we've got rid of the intersection. We are picking a, a bit of reflection now of the the backdrop that's seen on the other side of the cube, but I don't think that's going to be a problem because it's going to be quite blurred and I can always increase the size of the cube if I think that's going to be an issue. So if I increase the size of the cube and then flatten it a little so I moved it back again, then I can control what the reflection sees so I can get this little bit out of out of the way. It doesn't matter if it's a bit there, I'm just most interested in seeing what say, is happening to the feet of the model. So you can see that the ambient light we're providing from this light source here, the uh, number two, in fact I'll change the family so we can pick it out easier, is quite low. So if I copy and paste, control C, control V, and enlarge, enlarge it slightly so that the two spheres that are providing the light source don't coincide, otherwise it, they won't work. Oh, only one will be seen, then you can see we've now sort of doubled the amount of light arriving on the model. If that's a bit high in sky and fog, what you can do, hold Alt key down while clicking on this menu and go to HLS, you can lower the amount of light here that's provided through global ambient, and that will lower the light from the, uh, the gel light. So I'm going to increase it slightly, and there you go, there's a little bit of light. Right. I'll continue adding light sources now. I'll go to the Create menu and create another radial light. This is going to be direct light. and Edit that and give it full shadow softness. Check out and then move it away from the model and slightly up. So that's going to provide me a bit of general light. You can see in the preview here, you can see what effect it's having in 
well it's if it's set in fast preview that's in the exclusion of uh, true ambience if we switch it to accurate preview it shows you the true ambience version so that can be helpful just to see what your uh, direct light sources are contributing to the scene by look looking at this little preview so I must remember now I've turned soft shadows on in the light source to switch it on in the premium effects there and I'll just have a render of that so this is providing a bit of light up to the right and I'm going to provide another light source now so I'll copy and paste this one and I'll lower it down here so it's about level with the model edit it I'm going to turn the fall off to none so it'll seem quite bright but change the color to a sort of uh, sort of blue color I think so that's a nice blue color check out of that and that's going to provide a bit of light definition along this edge so I'll slide that back I think that's called rim light I don't know what the technical terms are for all these things but it just seems to help define the edges a bit so I've got that on that edge I want to make sure that I've got enough light arriving from the various approaches to uh, provide detail in the shadow regions so that's important and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to rotate the model slightly so uh, slightly more off at an angle there because I want to finally a uh, final thing to introduce I'm just rotating the camera a little bit zoom in slightly is uh, depth of field effects so I'll create an ordinary sphere and this is going to be a target for the depth of field effects so I'll just make it a bit smaller and in the attributes I'll hide it so it doesn't appear in the render zoom in and now this is where the nose of the the creature is so I'm going to place it more or less on the creature's nose so that'll be the bit that's in focus and then go into render options again select depth of field and set to current selection so as long as that sphere is selected and we're in the perspective camera view we can set it and then I'll just do a preview again and then just try and estimate how much effect this is having by previewing little areas so it's a bit out of focus there I think slightly more so in render options if I increase this value here uh, lens radius so that will mean that it'll be a little bit blurrier up just there and a little bit going out there we'll have a look at the feet see what effect it's having there actually although I did modify that I'm thinking I've probably got too much depth of field effect so uh, it's uh, worth uh, modifying again in fact I'll go under now so that's uh, 008 right so I'll just um, plot render these areas again don't want it to be too extreme usually just a bit of subtle effect is uh, is good otherwise I'll lose too much definition on on the material I don't want to do that so it's getting a bit of a balance there probably a bit much still So just uh, fine-tuning this now so that's uh, probably going to be about right yeah I'd say so right the last thing to do then is uh, go into the render options and select race pixel I'll try 64 and we'll see how long that takes to render So. All, all that's going to be dependent on the the size of the rendered image and obviously the amount of effects we're using the number of reflections and the maximum ray depth so that's giving us ooh, three quarters of an hour okay right so at this point i'll pause the video and we'll see how that looks after it's rendered out here's the completed render as you can see the lighting is uh, it's quite pleasant to look at there's a little bit of pixelation along this edge here and that's due to the fact that the very bright light is exceeding the pixel values and, and there's nothing you can do to anti-alias that even increasing the rays per pixel because it's a complete pixel that's burned out the only way to anti-alias that will be to re-render the image as a larger image and then scale it down in post work also speaking of post work I might want to clip off this little reflection here I should have probably made the back black cube in the background a bit larger there's some noise visible in this anisotropic reflection but uh, I don't think that detracts too much from the image it seems okay a good habit to get into then is to export the image in a high resolution format either HDR or in TIFF that's 48 bits per pixel for the TIFF or in the standard for HDR which is 98 bits per pixel if you export your image in that format it means that if you come to do post work and you've got a 
program that's capable of handling the extra colour information that's provided in that format, then you will have more room to work with uh, any corrections you make to the colours because it'll be stored at a higher bit resolution. And obviously you want to save the file anyway, so I'll just save it. I've saved it already, so I'll just do that again. Okay, so that's the end of the tutorial. I hope you found that interesting.